Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I hope everybody can uh, get a coffee and some breakfast and take a seat. We're getting ready to start here. Um, my name's Karen Grise. I'm pro bono counsel here at Freed Frank. I say here rather loosely because actually I'm based in Washington, D.C., but um, I'm happy to be hosting for the day. And I want to welcome everyone live in the room and as well as in our virtual audience um, to the uh, Academic Symposium of 2023. And tell me how many years? Many. I was going to say the number. <laughs> I was going to say the number, but I forgot to look it up. So I'm going to say to the umpteenth iteration of the academic symposium, and one that's always a joy for me to be part of, and very happy to host so many from our community to listen to, talk about, and dialogue on these important issues. So um, my job is to stand up here for about 30 seconds and tell people, help yourself to the food throughout the morning. If you notice coffee is out, if there's anything wrong with the bathrooms or anything like that, try to find me in the room and let me know, and I'll um, try to address those things the best I can as the, your host this morning. The um, lunch will be served in this room at about 12.15, so um, anyone that needs to leave at lunchtime can do that, but I don't want you to worry about how or why you're going to get lunch, because the lunch will... Um, come in and be available to you at that time. Restrooms are, um, as you leave the room, men to the left, ladies to the right, and um, the Wi-Fi information is on the screen. So you uh, just choose the Freed Frank visitor, um, log in, and then your password is there. Um, although I see it's all in capital letters. I actually think it might be all lowercase when you go to do it. So if you encounter any problems with the uh, capital peppermint, try the lowercase and that may be the answer. So um, let me help you anytime through the day as I can. And um, thanks again for being here. And I'm gonna turn you over immediately to our executive director, Mario Russell. Thank you. Good morning. I'm gonna use this. Yeah. Oh, sorry, so I just- We'll just turn this on. Welcome everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Great, thank you. So thank you, Karen, very much. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll be as brief as I can, but since I am the new executive director, I'll say a couple of words and remarks um, to you to welcome you and then welcome, of course, and start the program. So I'm delighted to meet you all and to greet you today to the Center for Migration Studies 2023 Academic and Policy Symposium, Complex Migration Challenges in a Changing World. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Those of you in this room who will also many more come and the more than 150 or so registrants online. So welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us in what I would call this effort to challenge and reframe migration norms, which is a necessary first step to building a just and compassionate society. We call today's event a symposium. Um, so after years of teaching at law school, <clears throat> I decided that it's appropriate to follow modern research protocols to ask and find out what a symposium is. So I looked it up on Wikipedia, <laughs> which says that uh, a symposium is when, quote, a group of people come together to learn about a certain topic. Such an environment allows for an exchange of ideas, thoughts, or even concerns between attendees and symposium presenters. Somewhat of a tautological definition. <clears throat> so that's a start. Uh, but there's more beyond Wikipedia, and it's interesting, actually. Many years ago, um, among the assigned readings for those of us who were philosophy majors in college, was the symposium by Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher. And at the time, some 2,400 years ago, and by that I mean ancient Greece, not when I was in college, though it might feel that way, <laughs> a symposium was something that took place after a meal, and where, in the words of one historian, music, dancing, recitals might accompany conversation. Uh, and notably, where the participants would be consuming wine, meaning that they might be induced to say things they would not say elsewhere or when sober. The historian continues, they might speak more frankly or take more risks, and they might even be inspired to make speeches that are particularly heartfelt and noble. 
So I'll say no more on this except to assume that our better angels will point us towards the heartfelt and noble way forward and away from any intoxicated risk-taking at this hour. And to be clear, um, and Freed Frank, don't worry, we're just serving coffee and water <laughs> and juice. But what's particularly striking about the symposium, if I may, is that it is about love. Not romantic love, but in the words of another scholar, love as a phenomenon that can inspire courage, good works, and overcoming the fear of death. Love that can change and spiritually transform. So is love a component part of today's symposium? I would say yes, because it is the necessary transformative force for good, particularly because our subject matter is so difficult. With 100 more million people displaced from their homes, 280 million living outside their country of birth, we see a world that in many ways is in pain, is distorted, and sometimes unrecognizable. How many times over the past 25 years have so many of us in this room had to say the following expression? Especially today, during these hard and challenging times for migrants and refugees, dot, dot, dot. And I wonder, do we feel self-conscious repeating this year after year? Do we feel like we are losing credibility and are maybe self-branding as alarmists? These self-criticisms and doubts are neither true nor fair, in my opinion, because just because, especially today, is, a repeat, is repeated year to year does not make it any less true or real. That it is repeated does not make it unrepeatable. To the contrary, it must be said today, and it must be said tomorrow, because it is true today as it was 30 years ago with Ira Ira, with 9-11 and its aftermath, with bipartisan immigration reform vanishing, with restrictionism at home in Europe and around the world, with mass migration out of North Africa and the Middle East, with the flight of children from Central America, with catastrophes in Afghanistan, Venezuela, Ukraine, and with the effects of climate change. Especially today, our work is important because at its core, it is about solidarity, about the common good, about human dignity. And therefore, if I can submit, it's about love. As researchers, policymakers, advocates, educators, service providers, government officials, and more, we can sp speak both to what needs to be done, but also to why we should do it. Dialogue can give way to rational and coherent solutions that embrace national interests and care for the individual. And I think probably that's what Plato was getting at in the symposium. There's a lot of work to do. And as executive director, I pledge to continue that work and mission with you. So before we start, let me just say a thanks to a few friends and partners who have been just a great support to CMS and have helped make today possible. First, thank you, Karen chairperson of CMS's Board of Trustees. Thank you to the law firm of Freed Frank for its long-standing support and this wonderful space. Thank you to my friend and CMS colleague, Kevin Appleby, for organizing and assembling this symposium. Thank you to Susan Martin and Holly Reed for your help in guiding and planning and advice for today. And of course, thank you, Don Kerwin who joins us as a scholar at the University of Notre Dame, but importantly, as editor of the Journal of Migration and Human Security, as legendary leader of CMS for 11 years, and as friend and mentor to me since the old days at Catholic Legal Immigration Network. And thank you also to the many extraordinary panelists and presenters, academics, advocates, service providers, and more. I'd like to especially send a thanks to the deputy mayor of New York City, Mayor uh, Ann Williams Isom, who will speak and join us today uh, to discuss a little bit about the asylum seeker uh, reception here in New York. And finally, a particular thanks to the Scalabrinian congregation, whose unique commitment to research and rootedness in the experience of encounter reaches back in time almost 60 years ago and brings us to today. So let me introduce our keynote speaker today, Alex Alinikoff. 
Alex is Dean of the New School for Social Research and Director of the Zolberg Institute for Migration and Mobility. He has served as United Nations Deputy High Commissioner for Refugees, as faculty at Georgetown University and Michigan Law School, and as co-chair of the Immigrant Task Force for President Barack Obama's transition team in 2008. Dean Alinikoff has written widely in areas of immigration and refugee law, and the title of his talk today is Reconceptualizing the International Protection Regime, Will Climate Change Lead the Way? Thank you, Dean Alinikoff. And I'll simply say this before I bring him here, is that he will be taking questions after his remarks and questions from the audience, and also we will moderate some questions through the um, virtual attendees. Thank you.